Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Neil Parfit. Kind of like Parfait, but it sounds less interesting. Anyway, let's dive right into it. So two months ago, a friend of mine sent me a link to a raffle that was online, and I was like, eh, sounds interesting. Why don't I buy a few tickets? So bought some tickets, didn't think anything of it. Then fast forward to early April, it's really early in the morning, a phone call rings from out of country, and usually when that happens, it's like a scammer looking for me to send them Bitcoin from an ATM or something like that. So I was like, man, do I answer this? I don't know. So for whatever reason, I answered the call and they're like, you've won. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I've won. And they're like, no, you won. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you won the raffle. And I'm like, I won the raffle. Oh, the raffle. So anyway, I won the raffle. So far, this sounds like a Seinfeld episode or something like that. So after about a two week stint in customs jail and a bunch of phone calls and emails, it finally showed up here last Wednesday and I can barely contain my excitement. So let me just show you what it is. Here we go. So this right here is a fully restored Mini Moog Model D from the late seventies. So it's actually older than me and it's one of the most iconic synthesizers of all time. And I have to put out a big thank you to the Bob Moog Foundation. Please check out the link in the description and see what they're up to. They do great things. So by now you're probably thinking, Neil, why the hell are you wearing a lab coat? And my answer to that is, well, why not take this opportunity to explain how a music synthesizer works? And what better way to do that than demo it on one of the most famous synthesizers ever produced? So let's dive in and when we're done, Take a look on the net and just look at how many famous recordings this has been used on. It's quite staggering actually. So most importantly, this video is for the complete noob. My goal is to explain you synthesizers like you've never touched a synthesizer in your life, or maybe your friend had one or you saw one in passing at a music store and all the knobs and buttons just looked really intimidating and you're like, oh, I don't know, looks too dorky tech nerd for me. So I'm gonna break it down in a real world language and let's make some sounds that are musical. So with that being said, I'm losing the lab coat. Welcome to my introductory video on music synthesizers. I hope you would like it. Let's first talk about sound and how it works. And I'll just use myself as an example here. Air is going through my lungs, it's passing my vocal cords, and based on the tension of those muscles, they vibrate. And in turn, that vibration causes the air molecules to vibrate. So the combined total of all those air molecules vibrating and projecting out of my mouth, that's a sound wave. Right now I'm talking and I don't sound musical. If you press a key on a piano, it sounds like the start of some musical piece. Instinctively, you know that something's consistent about it. And that's what we need to talk about, the consistency. So if you have a sound wave running at a consistent speed and it's vibrating the air at a specific speed, that's gonna create the pitch of the note. So if I go like this, ah, my vocal cords are locked at a specific vibration and we're hearing a consistent stable pitch. Well, not perfectly stable. That's why they have auto-tune, but that's another video you can check out. So those vibrations, if I have them slower, that's gonna sound lower. If I have those vibrations vibrating faster, that's gonna sound higher in pitch. It's this difference between going like this, oh, versus it's the speed of those air molecules rubbing back and forth. And if we look at it on a computer or a scope, you'll see it as like wiggly waveforms. So the speed of a waveform, that's its frequency. And it's abbreviated by the term Hertz, or you might see HZ. And sometimes it's not even mentioned, it's just a number. So just as a frequency example, here's a tuning fork I got at the music store. In really small letters, it says 523.3. And what that means is this thing will vibrate at 523.3 Hertz per second if I energize it. And also in addition to the number, it says the letter C, what we've determined in Western culture to be a C. That's a whole nother rabbit hole we can get into, but let's just stick with this. So here's another question for you. How is it that if I sing at a certain speed or pitch and you sing at the exact same pitch as me, we're matching frequencies but I still sound like me and you still sound like you. How is that if the frequencies are identical or close to it? So the answer is there's no such thing as a pure tone in real life. There's just too many variables at play with the air, materials. And as an example, I'll use myself again. If I'm singing at 440 Hertz, which happens to be an A, you may have heard the term A440, my vocal cords are vibrating the strongest at 440 Hertz. That's the fundamental frequency, but 
based on all the interactions happening inside my face, my tongue, my teeth, my nasal passage, there's all these additional sound waves that get added together. And the combination of all that is timbre. So that's what this is all about. It's about creating sounds. And it's one of the key things that makes synthesizers so interesting. So timbre is a really critical element here. That's what makes a string sound sound like a string, a clarinet sound like a clarinet, my voice sound like my voice, and your voice sound like your voice, and everything in between. And on a music synthesizer, we want to be able to try and create some of these waveforms, or at least mimic them. And let's dive into that now. So first things first, let's just look at what sound looks like on an oscilloscope. And we're not going to get technical here. Let's talk about noise. Noise is just random frequencies and random loudness all together with no set order. So if we look at it, it just looks like that. It just sounds like you went to a channel in the 80s or early 90s and you didn't have a converter and there was no channel there. Just a random scrambled signal. So earlier I was talking about how it's pretty much impossible to create a pure tone in real life acoustically. So let's take a look at what this pure tone is and we can generate this electronically and I'm using the synthesizer and let's see what this looks like on a scope. So this is called a sine wave and it's symmetrical on the upper and lower parts. So if I speed up the frequency, they get closer and closer together and the pitch goes up. And if I turn it down, they get farther apart and the pitch lowers. And that's the purest sound in existence. And it's a combination of a whole bunch of these sounds added together that create different waveforms. And we'll get into this on a different day when I do a video on the harmonic series, but we don't need to worry about any of that for now. Just to show you, this is what a sine wave looks like. So this is really important to note. We have a symmetrical waveform. It's stable, it's not drifting in pitch. This right here is being generated by an oscillator. And a synthesizer has one or more oscillators and their sole function is to generate a waveform. And depending on the synthesizer and its complexity, you can pick different types of waveforms and each of them have a different kind of sound. And remember, different kinds of sounds mean different kinds of timbre. So if you mix all these different oscillators together, you create a brand new timbre and it sounds even more interesting. So we'll go over how different kinds of sounds are made on this Minimoog Model D.